Late in the evening, at his mother's request, a boy goes to meet his brother and disappears. When he returns, he remains the same age, even though eight years have passed in the rest of the world. NASA scientists were surprised when they learned where the boy had been all this time. I'll be right back, I promise. A flying saucer hovers above the city, transforming into a frisbee disc, which is caught by a dog. The fact is that as part of the Independence Day celebration on July the 4th, 1978, a flying saucer catching championship is held in the city park, where trained and not-so-trained dogs participate. Among them is 12-year-old David's dog. The pet couldn't show its best performance, and the younger brother, Jeff, mocks his brother's training skills. The parents are unhappy with the constant teasing between the boys, so they forbid David from bullying his brother. After the competition, Jeff asks permission to stay with his friend, while the parents and David go home. The boy is upset, especially since he met a girl he likes, but he doesn't know how to start a conversation with her. The father tries to give his son advice, but evening comes, and his mother asks the boy to meet his younger brother, who is walking home through the small forest. David is displeased, but nevertheless goes to meet Jeff. He enters the woods, noticing the dog's uneasy behavior, especially since familiar objects like a flying saucer model seem mysterious and frightening in the dark. And then Jeff, wanting to scare his brother, jumps on him from a tree. Enraged, David is about to punish the prankster, but hears the dog's alarming barking. He goes after the dog, falls into a deep ravine, and loses consciousness. Regaining consciousness, David makes his way out of the woods in the dark and goes to his home. But an unfamiliar elderly woman opens the door at his knock, not recognizing David and not understanding what he needs. The boy rushes into the house, sees a completely unfamiliar setting, and runs to his room. But there, he is met by an elderly man, and upon seeing him, David sits on the stairs and cries in fear, not understanding where his parents are and why the house looks completely different. The concerned people call the police. The boy is taken to the station, and they begin searching for his relatives. And then, one of the staff notices an announcement about the disappearance of a 12-year-old boy from eight years before. The officer takes the boy to the address of the parents who were looking for their son at that time. On the way, the boy is asked questions, and he answers them all correctly, but for the year 1978. Arriving at the house, the detective knocks on the door, and David sees his father and then his mother, who have noticeably changed. The parents rush to greet their son, whom they lost hope of ever seeing again. At this time, a UFO is discovered near the city, having crashed after colliding with a power line support. NASA scientists surround the area and try to establish some contact with the aliens, but all efforts are in vain. Meanwhile, David is taken to a clinic for examination. The parents try to find out where he has been all this time, but David does not understand the question, as he left to meet his brother just a few hours ago. Then, a teenager enters his hospital room, who turns out to be Jeff. And this shocks David. He does not believe the boy's words until he shows a flyer with an announcement about his disappearance. The parents never stopped searching for him for a single day. It is now 1986, and the older brother has become the younger one. In the meantime, the found artifact is transported to a NASA hangar. And David begins to hear a strange call coming from an unknown source and asking for help, which he tells Jeff about. The latter reassures his brother, the doctors have examined him and declared him completely healthy. At this time, the scientists are trying to get inside the spacecraft, but no earthly technology allows them to do so. There is not a single seam in the hull, and it is unclear where the entrance is. Meanwhile, David continues to be examined, and they discover unusual brain activity when answering questions about what happened in the missing eight years. And the boy's brain communicates directly with the computer and draws an image of the found UFO on the monitor. The printout of the drawing goes to NASA, where Dr. Faraday, responsible for studying the found device, receives it. David is shocked. He is most afraid of becoming a guinea pig for scientists. He categorically refuses further examinations and demands to be returned to his parents, who support him and take him out of the hospital. Dr. Faraday asks permission to examine David at the NASA base, as it would be better for the family's peace of mind to find out where the boy has been and what happened to him. What if it happens again? Moreover, it would take no more than two days. 
David agrees and goes with the doctor to the NASA Research Center. As they drive past a hangar with a UFO, he hears someone's call again, but thinks he must have imagined it. In the room prepared for the boy, everything is equipped with the latest technology, but the doors are locked, which David does not like. He turns on the TV, marveling at the strange shows, but then a delivery robot enters the room, accompanied by a girl named Caroline. She jokes with the boy and answers his questions, surprised that David has not seen music videos and does not know the latest fashionable performers. Caroline says goodbye and David is left alone again. Later he calls his parents and complains about being locked up. The parents remind him that they are waiting for him at home in 48 hours. The doctor begins the examination. Moreover, the computer reads the answers from his brain before the boy has time to voice them. The first experiments yield astonishing results. It turns out that although the boy himself does not remember anything, his brain stores a vast amount of information describing the journey he made on an alien spacecraft to an unknown planet called Phalon, which is located several hundred light years away from the solar system. Due to the effects of relativity, the journey took only a few hours for David, while eight years had passed on Earth. The brain continues to answer questions and shows a star map, indicating the location of Phalon. It turns out that the boy's brain is literally stuffed with invaluable information, the study of which can take years. David realizes that his worst fears are coming true. Obviously, the examination will not be limited to two days, and he may not even dream of a normal life now. Caroline confirms this, mentioning that she saw his menu planned for a week in advance. David asks the girl to find his parents and tell them this. At night, he wakes up from a persistent call, which becomes stronger and finally understandable. The boy climbs inside the room service robot that arrives in the room, which takes him to the hangar where the crashed UFO is located. The UFO immediately opens the entrance from which a floating staircase appears. David goes inside and gets acquainted with the ship's computer, which calls him the navigator and admits that all the necessary star maps are programmed in the boy's brain. At this moment, the guards notice the open hatch and raise the alarm. The scientists run to the hangar, which the AI of the ship reports to David, and he suggests that they get away. Taking this as an order, the ship begins maneuvers, breaks the chains, and flies out of the hangar. David asks to fly 20 miles away, and the ship abruptly takes off into the sky. The boy clarifies that he only asks to fly away from that place, and the UFO returns to the hangar. The boy is impressed, but the ship does not understand his excitement since it's just a third-class maneuver. It then demonstrates a first-class maneuver, racing over the Earth at an unimaginable speed. David gradually gets used to the pilot's seat and even starts to control the UFO. They stop over a field and David asks to open the doors for natural needs. At the same time, there is confusion at NASA's center as it is unclear how the boy managed to reach the hangar unnoticed. Information about the UFO's whereabouts is received and a group of helicopters is dispatched. Meanwhile, the ship explains that it was testing the capabilities of the human brain. For this, it uploaded detailed star maps and other information necessary for the ship to return home into his memory. This turned out to be very prudent, as the ship's memory was damaged in the accident. Most importantly, the ship always returns its research subjects to the same time and place it took them from. But it turns out that time travel is very dangerous for humans. At this moment, the helicopters approach the UFO, and David hurriedly takes shelter in the spacecraft and asks to be taken home. The ship changes shape and takes off so fast that the Earth's machines don't even have time to notice where it went. During the flight, David finally gets to know the ship and names it Max. He asks Max to stop somewhere they won't be found, and Max descends to the bottom of the ocean. The amazed boy looks around and sees strange creatures that Max has collected from various planets for research. They are all different and possess interesting properties. Some have powerful grips, some have bizarre appearances. Max will send them all back to the place and time for which they were taken, and they won't even notice their absence. David notices a small amusing creature that is happy to see the boy. 
The creature complains that it's not being returned home, not knowing that its planet perished in a collision with a comet. David plays with it, explaining to the ship why humans laugh. At the same time, David's father calls Dr. Faraday, reminding him that his son's time at the NASA base is coming to an end. Faraday then orders Caroline to be found. Meanwhile, Max begins scanning David's brain, downloading his memories of everyday life at the same time. They even manage to argue like brothers. David comments on Max's ability to control the ship, and Max grants the boy pilot authority and shuts off the engines. With 15 seconds left before crashing, David finds the control panel and the ship soars above the planet. At the same time, Faraday's people find Caroline, who is telling David's parents what happened at the base. The people are shocked to learn that the boy is currently flying in a spaceship to an unknown destination. The girl tries to escape, but she is taken to the base, and David's parents are forbidden to leave the house. In the meantime, the ship hovers over Tokyo, where onlookers take photographs, and then sets course for America because David wants to go home. Flying over San Francisco, David stops the ship in a deserted area. He is lost and wants to know where to fly. Noticing a car below, he descends towards it and asks for directions to Fort Lauderdale, but the stunt people speed away. Max asks questions about strange sounds coming from the car, and David explains that it's music. The AI likes this and tunes into Earth's radio. The ship races over the planet with playing music, while TV news reports the appearance of UFOs over different parts of the world. The doctor realizes that the boy's flying home and calls a car. Meanwhile, David commands the ship to stop over a small gas station. The boy steps out under the stunned gaze of the owner and calls home. At the same time, a car arrives at the gas station whose owners are thrilled by the attraction and ask permission to take pictures with the UFO in the background. David speaks to Jeff who promises to send a signal pointing to their house. The boy enters the ship and it takes off, leaving the witnesses in awe. Meanwhile, Jeff finds fireworks and goes to the roof of his house, while police and military vehicles race towards him. The ship approaches Fort Lauderdale, but how to find the house? At that moment, fireworks burst in the sky, and David realizes that this is his brother's signal. His parents run out into the street, meeting the ship. The military arrives simultaneously. David despairs, they will never leave him alone. David steps outside, but only to say goodbye to his parents. The boy finally understands the hopelessness of his situation, and returning to the ship, asks to be taken to the past, despite the danger of evaporating. He bids farewell to Max, hoping to see him again someday, and the ship sets destination to the past. Sometime later, David comes to his senses in the same ravine where he fell eight years ago. He runs home and sees his parents, who are waiting for him to launch the holiday fireworks. He confesses his love to his mom, hugs the dog, and reconciles with his brother, whose eyes widen at the sight of a strange creature emerging from David's backpack. Fireworks bloom over the sea, and Max's farewell words are heard as he heads for Phelan. This is a kind and naive sci-fi from the late 80s. Unprecedented special effects for that time, an entertaining plot, and most importantly, the absence of aggression, which still allows it to be recommended as a good family movie today.